Well, we've heard the old adage that they're not making any more of it when referring to land, of course, and with the price of food soaring internationally, we could see even stronger demand for productive and sustainable farmland. We need to delve deeper into this and who better to look at it. We're joined now by the GM of Rural at Property Brokers, Conrad Wilkshire. Morning, Conrad. How are you, sir? Yeah, morning, Hamish. Morning, Richard. Yeah, Good great morning. to have you with us. Let's start with the price of food internationally. It, it's certainly on the rise. Yeah, look, it, it sure is, guys. Um, the UN Food and Agriculture Organisation calls FAO. It uh, has an index, a food index. It's up at its highest level since 2011. In fact, it's been on the rise. For, uh, this is the food in index has been on the rise for 12 straight months. It's actually up. 31% on the same time last year. And, it's, uh, it's, and the, particularly the ones that are really pushing it along are the cost of cereals and sugar. But also, you know, you've even seen in the GGT on the firming lately as well. And it got a, the GGT got a big kick in March earlier this year and it's been coming back, but that's coming back on too. So I think this is a significant trend for our sector. It's, uh, while we aren't seeing the um, cost of food spike here domestically, internationally, um, if you can think about uh, trading partners like Russia and China that probably don't quite rely on the same democratic processes in terms of how it directs its producers. If, if you've got ramping domestic prices, um, if, you know, sure as eggs is eggs, they're going to be putting a priority on domestic supply of food um, is one way of heading that off because they won't want to be importing expensive food with interrupted supply chains. So that, that has to bode well for us uh, because um, on our side of the house, well, obviously, we're an export nation, but we're an export nation with constrained supply. And like you know, like you talked about at the, on the top of this show was the fact they're not making any more of it. In fact, there's actually less of it most mm. years because mm. land's either been taken out or converted to another land use. So, you know, we actually have constrained supply in conjunction with you know ramping demand or costs of food. So, you know, look, if I had to sort of summarise, you know, like for, for decades we've been looking at globalisation. And um, the cost of food has, through that has been pushed down further and further through international supermarkets with vertically integrated supply chains. And, you know, the distributors have kept their margin, but the cost of food has been under pressure for decades. Well, you know, I'm not saying it's an overnight thing, but I think definitely the tide is changing, um, uh, particularly as these bigger nations look to the charity begins at home. Uh, it's hard to see how it doesn't bode well for New Zealand food producers, and it certainly doesn't hard to see how it doesn't bode well for land values over the both short and longer term. Yeah, Conrad, I, I shared with the boys, uh, Hamish and Dom, etc., a email I got from brother lord Steve Collins. He's uh, We talk to him often about what's going on in the UK and around Europe. And at the moment, he's house-sitting down the south of France looking after a Rhodesian Ridgeback, apparently. I don't know what <laughs> happens there. But anyway, he, uh, yep. old Steve's a character. If he's out shopping or walking the dog in this case, he came across a butcher shop. And he saw the prices in the window, so he takes a couple of photos. For example, loin chops, a four of them in a, on a uh, plate or a tray, nine yep. and a half euros, which um, is about 0.4 of a uh, kilo. So yep. yeah, just let's all yep. double that, call it 10, 20 euros a uh, kilo. Yeah. Uh, uh, twenty dollars. Yeah, no, twenty euros a uh, kilo. That's forty dollars uh, a kilo. And just on Thursday, the uh, Colgate sale. I took a few cold ram lambs across, and I was fairly happy. Got mid two thirty six or something for them. Next door to them was a pen of half a dozen big. I think they could have been crossbred Paul Dorset type lambs. Three hundred and twenty odd dollars. It's amazing. They were ram lambs, they were huge, and as the fellow that bought mine, he said, I'd eat yours all day, I don't know about those ones, because, you know, they're probably 14 months old, those ones, but, you know, yeah. mine are barely yeah. 12. So, you know, the price is right up there, in excess of $9 a kilo to the farmers. At some stage, as you said, it will hit here, won't it? Well, I think, yeah. I think guys, it is. I mean, Lowy, if, you, if you're converting that to $40 a kilogram, I mean, you want to throw some lamb chops on the barbecue in the middle of winter at the moment? You're nudging that here. 
go out to the deep freeze and you fossick around Hamish and just pull a bit of home kill out? Yeah, well, yeah, that's, that's all very well, <laughs> but not for 90% of New Zealanders who are paying in the $30 a kilogram at the moment for, for the likes of lamb chops. So, yeah, but I guess, OK, so let's, let's get down into the, the nitty-gritty of that, land values. But, uh, yep. you know, they're, they're obviously going to be driven north. Uh, under yeah. under under this uh, rise in international food prices, yeah, we, and we've already seen it, Hamish. We, like the market's up year on year about sixteen percent to the end of June yep. on the sort of on the index I, I watch is sort of twenty hectares and over. It, it's actually sixteen percent up on the on the median price, and so that you know that those trends are, are there. And so I don't think you know what it, what what it does say is that. Um, the underlying returns for farming, uh, to what Richard was talking about, are solid. Um, you can make, and, and people are still buying, not speculating on land. That's uh, anything like but what might have been in the past, which was, you know, as as we were, you know, driving more and more exports. Um, but I, I definitely, it's, it's we, we're expecting prices to firm uh, this season. But I still think people are conscious of making it pay and repaying principal and taking advantage of the low interest rate to make that principal repayment. So I don't think those are going to change. And certainly um, the real debt continues to come back. And uh, so that, that, I mean, there are all positive indicators for, uh, you know, a str- supply matching demand. Uh, we've had more supply than demand for the last few seasons, whereas we've definitely seen that change in mm-hmm. 2021. And we expect to see it continue in 22. Conrad, are you seeing uh, anything in around when you're selling properties, listing properties, uh, in around environmental issues uh, we, and inputs into farming? Because, you know, a, as we've read uh, through all our rural papers and got emails from our suppliers, fertiliser is going through the roof. Um, environmental yep. and all these costs, uh, environmental fertilizer, r- actual running costs of these properties are going rocketing up. Also, I know the local bailing contractor. Um, I, I think it's going to be up something like ten percent plus this year, just because of you know, like if you're doing bailage, you've got bailage wrap that's gone through the roof. So inputs are there. So farmers are going to have to get these high prices just to make ends meet, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. There's no windfall um, because there, there is cost pressure right across the economy, and 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 it's just getting hold of stuff is has been the biggest constraint. So you have got labour constraints which are really acute, mm-hmm. and particularly in horticulture, but uh, dairy particularly too. I mean, there's been conversations are going to you know once a day milking to mit- mitigate labour constraints, uh, which is you know pretty unheard of for dairy system at this time of the season, and and you've got cost pressure. So you know those. You know, it was always sort of said you need six dollars um, for the payout. Well, I think that's that's you're going to need more than six dollars to really make a, a strong return going forward because the cost pressure is definitely there. Yeah, and there'll be other pressures, you know, supply pressures. I know in and around Canterbury after this last fortnight, uh, a few big wins. A lot of irrigators were damaged uh, because a lot of uh, irrigation is not new. Irrigation is not being put on to source replacement irrigators or parts is going to be horrendous and you know yep. loss of loss of income because they can't grow the grass yeah it's funny you say that Richard because I, I still you know I had almost nine years with FMG and still very connected to the team there and we were actually talking before this wind event with Joe, uh, you know what the implications might be with with a storm in terms of accessing irrigation um, supply because in times past, when you've had big wind events, there's been big inventories and a lot of irrigation going in where there's nothing like that scale and obviously you've got supply chain. So it's actually, you know, in the past it would have been trying to get everything up reinstated within six weeks. But look, I'm not I'm not close to the, the detail of this now, but it's hard to see how you can get anything in uh, six weeks. I can't even get a bloody pump for my spa pool. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, this is a yeah. first world problems. Yeah, exactly. You can't get anything. <laughs> Conrad, you mentioned being, uh, you know, being with FMG years ago. Uh, interesting story I heard in Oxford. No names, no anything that mentioned, but a trampoline went wayward the other night. <laughs> yeah. Flew up, hit this person, the neighbour's chimney, 
Next thing, the flue came crashing down inside the house, little yeah. room upstairs. Yeah. That catapulted it straight down, and the legs of the trampoline pierced their vehicle in the car uh, in the driveway. Yeah. Right. Two different insurance companies. The car was written off because it had substantial holes and it had hit the roof structure in such a manner that it, it buggered it. So, you know, it was a either make it a convertible or write it off. It was written off. <laughs> only was, only you'd think of that, Lowy. Yeah. Oh, in the summer it'd be okay. This yeah. last week, 10 days wouldn't have been too good. Uh, but the thing is, the insurance company of the people that owned the trampoline are saying, no, how often is something like that considered an act of God or nature or... Yeah. Uh, hard to comment on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See how I just stopped yeah. at that? Yeah. Because isn't that bizarre? Yeah. yeah. Isn't that bizarre? Yeah. So these people, you know, that were living in this house, their fires being, being munted, can't get it fixed because... It was an act of God that threw the champagne, not, not anyone in particular. What? How stupid. Yeah. I would have thought the house that got the damage, uh, you'd expect that insurance company to respond. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I'd said to these people, I bet you the insurance companies are having a great discussion. Mm. <laughs> right. Uh, okay, back to, <laughs> back to, back to property. <laughs> back to property. We're talking yeah, with the yeah, chair. It's probably not straightforward. Yeah. Uh, GM of rural and property brokers, Conrad Wilkshire. So the market right now, uh, how's it faring? Much activity? Yeah, look, uh, COVID definitely slowed things down. And and then um, this recent spell of weather, which actually the water is pretty welcome, across particularly on the east coast of New Zealand. So nobody's really complaining about that. But that, that's definitely slowed things down too because obviously uh, ahead of the campaign, you want to get all the artwork and everything right. And you're talking about the compliance side, there's all that information. So it just has slowed slowed the job down. But we're definitely open for business now, and uh, the guys have been. We've basically crossed out all the all the meetings and things that we would have been having, and just put it in favour of actually getting out on farm. So the guys have got the hammer down at the moment, big time. And we're getting some excellent listings coming forward. Um, last year we sold close on 270 properties for over 40,000 hectares, and so we've set some big goals for this year to work alongside the market and you know we're, it's you know we're getting good support and people are feeling confident and which is you know so we're getting good inquiry and we're getting some excellent listings so you now we're you know we're you know obviously this is a um, busy time of the year it's the business end of the year for us and so it's all all hands on deck Great stuff. There we go. That is Conrad Walkshire, all hands on deck, property brokers, a GM of rural there here on Rural Exchange on Magic Talk.